Section 18 of Aesop's Fables, a new translation. Written by Aesop, translated by V. S. Vernon Jones. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This section has been read by Roslyn Carlyle. The Fox and the Hedgehog a fox, in swimming across a rapid river, was swept away by the current, and carried a long way downstream in spite of his struggles, until at last, bruised and exhausted, he managed to scramble onto dry ground from a backwater. As he lay there, unable to move, a swarm of horseflies settled on him and sucked his blood undisturbed, for he was too weak even to shake them off. A hedgehog saw him, and asked if he should brush away the flies that were tormenting the fox. But the fox replied, Oh, please, no, not on any account, for these flies have sucked their fill, and are taking very little from me now. But if you drive them off, another swarm of hungry ones will come, and suck all the blood I have left, and leave me without a drop in my veins. THE CROW AND THE RAVEN A crow became very jealous of a raven, because the latter was regarded by men as a bird of omen which foretold the future, and was accordingly held in great respect by them. She was very anxious to get the same sort of reputation herself, and one day, seeing some travellers approaching, she flew onto a branch of a tree at the roadside, and cawed! as loud as she could. The travellers were in some dismay at the sound, for they feared it might be a bad omen, until one of them, spying the crow, said to his companions, It's all right, my friends, we can go on without fear, for it's only a crow, and that means nothing. The moral of this story is that those who pretend to be something they are not only make themselves look ridiculous. THE WITCH A witch professed to be able to avert the anger of the gods by means of charms, of which she alone possessed the secret, and she drove a brisk trade and made a fat livelihood out of it. But certain persons accused her of black magic, and carried her before the judges, and demanded that she should be put to death for dealings with the devil. She was found guilty and condemned to death and one of the judges said to her as she was leaving the dock, You say you can avert the anger of the gods? How comes it then that you have failed to disarm the enmity of men? THE OLD MAN AND DEATH An old man cut himself a bundle of faggots in a wood and started to carry them home. He had a long way to go, and was tired out before he had got much more than half way. Casting his burden on the ground, he called upon death to come and release him from his life of toil. The words were scarcely out of his mouth when, much to his dismay, death stood before him, and professed his readiness to serve him. He was almost frightened out of his wits, but he had enough presence of mind to stammer out, g, -g, -g good sir! If you be so kind, pray help me up with my b burden again. The Miser A miser sold everything he had, and melted down his hoard of gold into a single lump, which he buried secretly in a field. Every day he went to look at it, and would sometimes spend long hours gloating over his treasure. One of his men noticed his frequent visits to the spot, and one day watched him and discovered his secret. Waiting his opportunity, he went one night and dug up the gold and stole it. Next day the miser visited the place as usual, and finding his treasure gone, fell to tearing his hair and groaning over his loss. In this condition he was seen by one of his neighbours, who asked him what his trouble was. 
The miser told his neighbour of his misfortune, but the other replied, Don't take it so much to heart, my friend. Put a brick into the hole and take a look at that every day. You won't be any worse off than before, for even when you had your gold it was of no earthly use to you. The Foxes and the River A number of foxes assembled on the bank of a river and wanted to drink. But the current was so strong, and the water looked so deep and dangerous, that they didn't dare to do so, but stood near the edge, encouraging one another not to be afraid. At last one of them, to shame the rest and show how brave he was, said, I am not a bit frightened. See, I'll step right into the water. He had no sooner done so than the current swept him off his feet. When the others saw him being carried downstream, they cried, Don't go and leave us. Come back and show us where we too can drink with safety. But he replied, I'm afraid I can't yet. I want to go to the seaside, and this current will take me there nicely. When I come back, I'll show you with pleasure. The Horse and the Stag there was once a horse who used to graze in a meadow which he had all to himself. But one day a stag came into the meadow and said he had as good a right to feed there as the horse, and moreover he chose all the best places for himself. The horse, wishing to be revenged upon his unwelcome visitor, went to a man and asked if he would be able to help him to turn out the stag. Yes, said the man. I will by all means, but I can only do so if you let me put a bridle in your mouth and mount on your back. The horse agreed to this, and the two together very soon turned the stag out of the pasture. But when that was done, the horse found to his dismay that in the man he had got himself a master for good. The Fox and the Bramble in making his way through a hedge, a fox missed his footing and caught at a bramble to save himself from falling. Naturally, he got badly scratched, and in disgust he cried to the bramble, It was your help I wanted, and see how you have treated me. I'd sooner have fallen outright. The bramble, interrupting him, replied, You must have lost your wits, my friend, to catch at me, who am myself always catching at others. THE FOX AND THE SNAKE A snake, in crossing a river, was carried away by the current, but managed to wriggle onto a bundle of thorns which was floating by, and was thus carried at a great rate downstream. A fox got sight of it from the bank as it went whirling along, and called out, Gad, the passenger fits the ship! THE LION the fox and the stag. A lion lay sick in his den, unable to provide himself with food. So he said to his friend the fox, who came to ask how he did, My good friend, I wish you would go to yonder wood and beguile the big stag who lives there to come to my den. I have a fancy to make my dinner of a stag's heart and brains. The fox went to the wood, and found the stag, and said to him, My dear sir, you're in luck. You know the lion, our king? Well, he's at the point of death, and has appointed you his successor, to rule over the beasts. I hope you won't forget that I was the first to bring you the good news, and now I must be going back to him, and if you take my advice, you'll come too and be with him at the last. The stag was highly flattered, and followed the fox to the lion's den, suspecting nothing. No sooner had he got inside, though, than the lion sprang upon him. But the lion misjudged his spring, and the stag got away with only his ears torn, and returned as fast as he could to the shelter of the wood. The fox was much mortified, and the lion, too, was dreadfully disappointed for he was getting very hungry in spite of his illness. 
so he begged the fox to have another try at coaxing the stag to his den. It'll be almost impossible this time, said the fox, but I'll try. And off he went to the wood a second time, and found the stag resting and trying to recover from his fright. As soon as he saw the fox, he cried, You scoundrel! What do you mean by trying to lure me to my death like that? Take yourself off, or I'll do you to death with my horns. But the fox was entirely shameless. What a coward you were, said he. Surely you didn't think the lion meant any harm? Why, he was only going to whisper some royal secrets into your ear when you went off like a scared rabbit. You have rather disgusted him. And I'm not sure he won't make the wolf king instead unless you come back at once and show you've got some spirit. I promise you he won't hurt you, and I will be your faithful servant. The stag was foolish enough to be persuaded to return, and this time the lion made no mistake but overpowered him and feasted right royally upon his carcass. The fox, meanwhile, watched his chance, and, when the lion wasn't looking, filched away the brains to reward himself for his trouble. Presently the lion began searching for them, of course without success, and the fox, who was watching him, said, I don't think it's much use your looking for the brains. A creature who twice walked into a lion's den can't have got any. The Man Who Lost His Spade a man was engaged in digging over his vineyard, and one day, on coming to work, he found his spade missing. Thinking it may have been stolen by one of his labourers, he questioned them closely, but they one and all denied any knowledge of it. He was not convinced by their denials, and insisted that they should all go to the town and take oath in a temple that they were not guilty of the theft. This was because he had no great opinion of the simple country deities, but thought that the thief would not pass undetected by the shrewder gods of the town. When they got inside the gates, the first thing they heard was the town crier proclaiming a reward for information about a thief who had stolen something from the city temple. Well, said the man to himself, it strikes me I had better go back home again. If these town gods can't detect the thieves who steal from their own temples, it's scarcely likely they can tell me you stole my spade. The Partridge and the Fowler A fowler caught a partridge in his nets, and was just about to wring its neck, when it made a piteous appeal to him to spare its life, and said, Do not kill me! But let me live, and I will repay you for your kindness by decoying other partridges into your nets. No, said the fowler, I will not spare you. I was going to kill you anyhow, and after that treacherous speech you thoroughly deserve your fate. The Runaway Slave A slave, being discontented with his lot, ran away from his master. He was soon found missing by the latter, who lost no time in mounting his horse and setting out in pursuit of the fugitive. Presently he caught up with him, and the slave, in the hope of avoiding capture, slipped into a slaver's treadmill and hid himself there. Ha! Ah, said his master, that's the very place for you, my man. The Hunter and the Woodsman a hunter was searching in the forest for the tracks of a lion, and, catching sight presently of a woodsman, engaged in felling a tree, he went up to him and asked him if he had noticed a lion's footprints anywhere about, or if he knew where the den was. The woodsman answered, If you will come with me, I will show you the lion himself. The hunter turned pale with fear, and his teeth chattered as he replied, Oh, I am not looking for the lion, thanks but only for his tracks. The Serpent and the Eagle 
an eagle swooped down upon a serpent and seized it in his talons with the intention of carrying it off and devouring it but the serpent was too quick for him and had its coils round him in a moment and then there ensued a life-and-death struggle between the two a countryman who was a witness of the encounter came to the assistance of the eagle and succeeded in freeing him from the serpent and enabling him to escape in revenge the serpent spat some of his poison into the man's drinking horn heated with his exertions the man was about to slake his thirst with a draught from the horn when the eagle knocked it out of his hand and spilled its contents upon the ground the moral of this story is that one good turn deserves another end of section eighteen